everyone, my name is Hafo, and uh, today we've got part two of my lock-on tutorial. Uh, the last one got a great response, um, and lots of people were messaging me asking how did I continue it, and I was very busy last week, so I didn't really get a chance to do the part two during the week, so I thought I would do it today. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys will enjoy this tutorial. It's a nice, easy one. Uh, I'm just—I showed you in the first part how to actually make the target itself, and I've just pre-prepared. I've just made one now, um, the exact same way as I taught you guys, uh, which was just using the pen tool and then creating a new solid and masking it round, basically, and. I'll start as soon as my computer stops. Right, here we go. As I say, uh, the reason I don't do I I want right. I was saying to a few people the other day. The reason I don't do as much editing or like edits as I do, as I do, I don't do that many because my computer is slow and it takes forever. As many of you will know, I'm sure lots of your computers are pretty slow as well. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna mask around this just so I don't have all the rest of the screen. Wait. Just so uh, the rest of the screen doesn't. If I decide to um, resize this now, um, what it'll do is it'll only resize this little square rather than resizing the whole screen. And because it just it just goes weird if you don't do this, so I would recommend just going around it with a mask, and it just gets rid of all the unnecessary space on the screen. And if I get rid of that, so now I can just stretch that to be what I want. So that's my target. Um, I've twixted this clip and, right, so what we're going to do to start is we're going to apply some colour correction to the clip. So I'm just going to create a new adjustment layer. I'm just going to drag that underneath the target. And we're just literally going to go to some curves. Drag that in to our adjustment layer. And I'm just going to, instead of going RGB where it says channel, you can change that to red and you're going to turn that up a bit, I think. Yeah, turn it up. Down as well. So it goes a bit blue looking. And then we're going to go to our blue. And we can turn the blue up. Turn it down a bit more. I mean, it's uh, it's really up to you. That one looks a bit black because that one's green. But you're looking to try and create a purpley look. Um, and this is pretty important if you want to be able to see your target. But it's really up to you how you do yours. I'm just trying to mess around. I'm not going to get it perfect now because... I don't I don't know if I saved a preset. No, I didn't. Uh, if you get a good one, I recommend saving it as a preset. So what I would do is I would keyframe in this. Um, keyframe in your curves. So when your twigs to start and you want your target to fly in, the color correction applies. So I would just do that by keyframing that there. Then going back a frame. No, go back a few frames actually. Um, it depends how much you want to go back. Uh, how how long you want it to start, if you know what I'm saying. How long you want the curves to take to come in. So as you can see, uh, it runs over in no colour correction. And then as the Twixter starts, the colour correction slowly applies. And as this colour correction applies, now what we want it to do is for this target to fly in, lock on our character, not on our character, on our dude there. And then uh, for it to like fly off and then the guy shoots. So what we're going to do is we're going to... Just do it literally by keyframing this. So we're going to go to transform on our little lock on thing. Um, we're just going to keyframe the position, the scale, the rotation, and the opacity. So we're going to keyframe everything. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to make this a bit bigger. Um, like so. It goes... Um, it might blur, it might make it a bit less, better, it might make it a bit worse quality around the edges here, but that you'll just have to make, when you're making it, make it bigger on the screen and it'll keep its nice look. I just made mine pretty small, so I'm stretching it here, but you wouldn't probably do the same. I know you guys wouldn't do that. Um, so now we've got this over here, we drag that off the screen. Then we're going to go f through it, like, we're going to go forward like half a frame. Not half a frame, what am I saying? Half a second. And we're going to drag our... We're going to drag this over onto the screen. 
and we're going to make it a bit smaller so it locks onto our character so y if you want you can fit it to the character it's up to you um, really is up to you guys what you want to do with it or you could make it the square I'm just going to make mine a bit of a rectangle look so it fits the dude so it's up to you as I say so now that's fit on and as you'll see what it, hap what it does is it flies on like so and locks onto the player now uh, to make it a bit more exciting go out, well just to make it look a bit better I'm going to go back to my first keyframe and change the opacity to zero maybe not even zero maybe about 30 so then when it flies on it's a bit faded and then we'll move it over to our second keyframe and change it to 100 opacity so as you will see what it does is as it flies in it kind of it becomes well the opacity just uh, increases so you can see it clearer that's basically what opacity is just means that you can't see through it very much um, so as we've done the opacity I also forgot to do we're gonna increase we're gonna add some rotation to it to make it look a bit better as well so I'm just gonna rotate this to start making sure that you can't see any of it on the screen and as you'll see that'll fly in and then we'll go there and rotate it back to normal I'm rotated the wrong layer there sorry about that so we're gonna rotate this layer just like that and that's pretty good so far now as you'll see it just flies on the dude rotating as it flies in and then locks on now if you want to add some sound effects which I recommend you do with this effect as it can be quite plain without um, I suggest you maybe even flash this so like as it locks on you might have a beeping sound and might want to do it so every beep it flashes um, I've seen that done quite a lot so to flash it all you would do is keyframe the opacity um, so it's 100 there and then you'd take it down to say about maybe whatever you want 50 or so then go forward again to the next beep I don't have any on mine because I haven't imported any sound effects um, but so then what that'll do is that'll go from bright to fairly uh, you can't really see it that much to brighter again and it just it just like basically flashes and it looks pretty good um but yeah that's pretty much all there is to this tutorial um i'm sorry if you guys um i'm sorry if you guys were waiting for this one because i didn't do it during the week when i said i would but i was really busy with work and school work and stuff so uh, yeah, if there's anything else you would like to see, just drop me a message or even message me on Skype. Um, I always reply to my messages, so yeah, if you liked this video, if you could leave a like, and if you haven't seen part one, it was a bit of a waste of time watching this because you pretty much need to watch part one uh, to know how to make this little target. And I will also leave a download in the description if you want to download mine because you can't really bother making your own, which is understandable because it's a bit of a pain. So yeah, um, if you enjoyed this tutorial, as I say for people, please leave a like and check out my channel for loads more editing tutorials. And yeah, I'll see you guys later and I hope you enjoyed.